localizer, uh, GPS, DME if I had it installed. So it's, it's a central unit that has all of my comms and navs in it. So I've got a one and I've got a two. They also contain, if you look there, it says I.O. processors. The GIAs are also kind of the processing unit of the G1000. Information goes through them and back out through them. They're kind of the, call them the processor, the, the intel of the system that's sending everything around. My air data computer replaces what? Pedostatic. static. Okay, my AHARS replaces what? Gyros. My gyros, good. And then I've got a magnetometer, okay? ADC simply is just an electronic pressure sensor. The little tubes connect into it, just like you normally would into a normal airspeed indicator or altimeter. It then takes the pressures and measures them. AHARS has electromechanical, microelectronic mechanical sensors, MEMS. Say that 10 times fast. The MEMS inside are kind of the same thing as like in your iPhone. It's accelerometers, different things like that. It measures where you're at, okay? The AHARS, though, actually uses information also from GPS, magnetometer, and pedostatic system to determine your attitude. Okay, this is why the G1000 actually boots up quicker than an Avidyne. An Avidyne takes, I've, I've never flown one, I've heard it's like two or three minutes to boot up. G1000, 40 seconds at the most. It boots up, no problem. I can reboot a G1000 in flight, no problem. Okay, what it does is it's comparing all this data to make sure it matches. If I sense that, okay, I've pitched up, well, if I pitch up, how's that going to change my air data computer? Well, either my altitude or my airspeed should be changing. So it's going to verify to make sure that everything is doing exactly what I think. Magnetometer is a three-dimensional compass. Three-dimensional means it can sense not just north and south, it can also sense your pitch and your bank because it can sense, okay, here's the magnetic line. Oh, I'm at an angle. And so it actually picks up that three-dimensional compass. Transponder. Transponder is a mode S. Okay, that means it has mode A, C, and S. What is mode A? Oh, not bad. I'm having trouble writing. Horizontal position. Mode A is the capability of putting in a code so that when the radar hits you, it sends back. So basically it pings you. You respond back with your code, and it says, okay, I know where you are, and that's how they can type in your name and track your flight. Mode C, simply just when it responds, also sends your altitude, your pressure altitude. ATC then uses the appropriate altimeter setting for the location and adjusts it to your real altitude. But your transponder sends pressure altitude. So if you've got your altimeter setting set off, that's not going to affect what they're seeing on their screen. I had a, I had a student that was like, yeah, ATC like called me and I told it was 500 feet off, so I just reached over and grabbed the altimeter setting. So, <laughs> doesn't do anything, okay? Pressure altitude. Mode S, what that does is it actually sends out, so now it sends back, says here's my code, here's my altitude, and oh, by the way, could you tell me if there's any other traffic around me? In order for mode S to work, you must have a mode S transponder, the radar must be mode S, and everybody else, to get the traffic, they must be in radar contact with some sort of transponder. It doesn't matter whether it's A or C, but they have to have a transponder and they have to be in radar contact also. So then the radar re replies back and says, hey, here's the traffic in your location. I got this guy, he's five miles west of your position at this altitude, and it displays it on our screen shows us the position, which direction they're traveling, altitude. That's how it works. So that's the test. The yes. Traffic information system. So what's the difference between TCAS? Is the TCAS, the difference is, is technically your TCAS is you pinging the aircraft. Okay. So TCAS, I actually send out a signal that pings their transponder. Their transponder replies back to me, and then it says, okay, I know where you are in relation to me. 
So with TCAS, you don't need radar coverage. Correct. And that's the difference, is that mode S is very, very, you have to be in radar contact. Not only radar contact, yeah, but you have to be a, a mode S radar. Is that pretty mode S radar? Mode S, you're going to find at like Class Bravo airports. We went out to Reno, though, which is really busy, Class Charlie. They didn't have it out there. So we're like looking at our screen, where's our traffic? So they have to have mode S. So yeah, so TCAS technically is going to be, I guess, better because you're getting a local response. Um, we have 107 Uniform Victor has TCAS in it. And I'll tell you honestly, mode S is more accurate than the TCAS when it displays it on the map. So, so with uh, the mode S, I guess my question is 107 Uniform Victor. Does it have TCAS and mode S together? No. It's just if one you have the TCAS other. installed, mode S is in it. Okay. So now if I uninstall the TCAS, it does still have a mode S transponder in it, but it won't run both at the same time. Okay. Yeah. So it's nice because, you know, right when I take off, I've already got traffic information immediately. But the problem is, is the first, you know, first week we had it, we were flying it, and all of a sudden it, it's horrible to it, like yells at you, traffic, one o'clock. <laughs> and so we all look out the window at one o'clock and this palatus goes <laughs> right off our left side. Nice one o'clock. <laughs> you know. So you've got to be careful on, on knowing the capabilities of your system. Personally I think it's probably just it's not as an expensive as a system on T cats. Probably not as good as what you get on your jets. Things like that. Because those jet T cats are usually pretty accurate. So it's something they need to improve. Engine airframe unit. That's simply just your engine gauges. And these are just my autopilot servos. So my pitch, my bank, the off, or no, sorry, I don't have the off. What does it say on here? Pitch roll, pitch trim. Oh, sorry, it's pitch trim. Okay? Here's how we diagram it three steps. Makes it easy. First step, you go around the outside, everything on the outside talks back and forth. So you just go in a big circle. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Back and forth. Step one this is what makes it easier for your students to be able to remember how to diagram. Why is it important to be able to diagram? Because when something fails, I need to know what's downstream. What else did I lose? Okay. And we see this all the time with the students. We fail their MFD, and they're like, where'd my radios go? Well, if you knew your diagram, you'd know where your radios went. Okay. So it is very critical in being able to identify why you've lost items. Okay, same thing of why in the airlines they make you memorize the hydraulic systems. I need to know that if I just lost this, I lost everything that's upstream from there. Okay? So, step one, around the outside everything talks back and forth. Step two, my two main units, Air Data and AHARS, they both talk out and up. Out and up. It's a redundancy. Last thing, the center of this whole diagram, kind of you can see, is the AHARS. Well, that's because my last four units surrounding it all talk into the AHARS. Notice that this is a separate line. It's not a back and forth line. That's because this line only comes from the GPS. It is not coming from the integrated avionics unit. It's strictly a GPS feed. That's why it's a separate line. Okay? So that's how to diagram it. Really easy way to remember it. Works really well. That way on their check ride they just snap it out. No problem. If you can snap out a diagram like that on your check ride, the questions stop pretty quick. If you start struggling, the questions keep going. So, all right. Our main units, air data computer, has four inputs: a pedo, my static, my alternate static, and my outside air temperature probe. So the air data computer is literally, literally a raw data collector. It's collecting the actual pressures, 